is necessary in order to demonstrate two things or to face, answer two questions. First of all, is this really a long-standing reformed practice to sign the creeds or is this a relatively new invention? Secondly, we need to see why did the church draw up a form and require office bearers to sign it? Why? So how long has this been going on and why this form? How long? The answer to that is this. The faithful Reformed Church has practiced subscription nearly throughout all her history. The Reformation came to the Netherlands very early on in the 1520s. Calvinism came a little later. Lutheranism was the dominant religion. But when the Reformed faith came into the Netherlands, it took over very, very quickly in the 1540s and 1550s. When did they start signing the formula of subscription or signing the creeds? In 1559, the French churches, now we're in, in France, the French churches in 1559, heavily influenced by that Frenchman named John Calvin, had their office bearers sign their confession. 1559, they signed their confession. The Walloon churches were the French-speaking churches in the Netherlands. They fled from France because of persecution to the Netherlands, and there, of course, they faced even greater persecution. But they held a senate in 1563, 1563, and they re required the delegates to sign the French for Confession of Faith. In 1568, they did not require subscription at a senate in Basel, but they said this, it is resolved that everyone who has been lawfully called to the ministry should be asked at his examination, this is what every candidate for the ministry will be asked, whether he agreed in everything with the doctrine that was publicly taught in the churches and contained in the Netherlands Confession of Faith and the Heidelberg Catechism. So they didn't have to sign anything but they had to answer the question, do you agree with all the doctrine that is taught in those two documents? The earliest, broadest gathering of the Reformed churches in the Netherlands actually met outside the Netherlands in Emden. And they decided the following, as you find in your program, in the inside, the gathering held at Emden, October 4, 1571. This is what they decided in order to demonstrate the unity in doctrine among the Netherlands churches, the brethren thought it well to subscribe to the confession of faith of the Netherlands churches, likewise to subscribe to the confessions of the churches of France, in order thereby to attest their agreement and unity with these French churches. Why did they sign them? In order to demonstrate unity. Unity with the church in the country next door. Unity within the church in the Netherlands. Whether you were from Amsterdam or Gelderland or from any of the churches in the Netherlands, you would have a unity in doctrine. In doctrine. They saw that as being that important. In 1574, a provincial synod meeting in Dordrecht decided that all ministers must sign the confession and the articles of the church order. Both had to be signed. Another provincial senate met in Dortrick four years later and decided that ministers and professors of theology must sign the confession, and they added it would be good that the same be done by elders. So it started out with only the delegates that attended a particular meeting, then it broadened out into the ministers, all of the ministers in a particular group of churches. Then it was added the professors of theology, and they said, and it would be good if it would include also the elders of the church. A general senate of Middleburg in 1581, that's the next paragraph on the program, 
said this, ministers of the word, elders and deacons, also professors of theology, which is also fitting for other professors, and schoolmasters shall subscribe to the confession of faith of the Netherlands churches. That's the broadest scope of all. Ministers, elders, deacons, professors of theology, and the schoolmasters must sign the confession of faith. Well, so far, what we've just seen is signing a confession. What about a form? Well, one of the earliest forms is ado was adopted by a classis of Alkmaar, which you find also in the program in 1608. That reads as follows. We, the undersigned preachers, under the jurisdiction of the classes of Elkmar, declare and witness that the teaching which is in that catechism, adopted unanimously by the Reform, that is the Heidelberg Catechism, and which is comprehended in the 37 articles of the Dutch Reformed Churches, the Belgic Confession, agrees in everything with the Word of God, and consequently with the foundation of the teaching of salvation. We promise to maintain this same teaching through God's grace and openly to reject all teachings which are brought against and oppose it and with all diligence and faithfulness according to our ability to stand against them as we affirm the same with our signatures. That's the, one of the first forms of subscription. Then there's the great Senate of Dort, 1618-19. You recall that that synod met because of the controversy of Arminianism. The remonstrants were supporting a general salvation dependent on man, election that was dependent upon man's faith and all of that. That's the issue of the synod of Dort. But it was also a controversy over confessions that had been going on for 40 years because there were people that were teaching forms of Arminianism and the churches would say to those ministers, all right, now sign the creeds. And some of them signed the creeds and then turned around and continued teaching their Arminianism. So the Senate of Dort had to face the issue of what to do with these people who were signing the creeds and still teaching heresy. And that's why we have the decision, the fourth paragraph that you have in the inside of the program, the Senate of Dort, 1618-19, said this, It is decided that a standard form for subscription of the Confession, Catechism, and Synodical Decisions, okay, that's the Belgic Confession, Heidelberg Catechism, and now what will become the Canons of Dort. Those are the Synodical Decisions be drafted, that a form be drafted by means of which all ministers clearly certify their agreement with the accepted doctrine and by which, and now notice this, the evasions of some who try to deceive the churches are prevented. A form was necessary because there were ministers who would say, oh, I'll sign the confessions. But in their own mind, they were saying things like, that doesn't mean I agree with everything in those confessions. It just means I'm committed to the confessions. The Canons of Dort said, we need a form that will not allow men to do that. They might still lie within their heart. We can't always see inside the heart. But what does it mean to sign a confession? This form will state it explicitly what does it mean when an office bearer signs a confession? And so they drew up a form for ministers of the word, another form for professors of theology, not all of whom were ministers, and still a third form for teachers. I won't read the form, but I included it in the program here for your perusal. You can read it later on to see what kind of a form teachers signed at the direction of the Senate of Dort. So they needed this form, a form that would express the unity that they would all say, we believe the confessions, and this is what it means when we say, we believe the confessions. 
The office bearers were required to sign it, though the elders not 